Hello and welcome to my F122 driver career mode driving for Albion alongside Fernando Alonso We're here in Monaco for round 4 and as you can see on your screen we have a very very worn engine that we qualified P12 but we are going to take an engine penalty for the engine we're going to stick with the turbo because Monaco and you can get away with a slightly worn apart but let's get into the race a proper road race and in the true meaning of the word that's how mr monaco the late great graham hill once described this iconic event the cars we drive have come a long way in the intervening half century but we still race on those same public roads beside the mediterranean there is no victory more coveted than that of the monaco grand prix the prestigious Circuit de Monaco then is not all that dissimilar today to the layout that made its debut almost a century ago. It's two miles and 19 corners through the streets of Monte Carlo, and although the average lap speed of around 93 miles per hour is the lowest of the season, the tiny margins for error make it the natural habitat of the safety car. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks like for today's race. It's Carlos Sainz in pole position, and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Leclerc, Russell, Valtteri Bottas, and Fernando Alonso, Norris, Ricardo, Joe, and Sebastian Vettel, Sonoda, Brown, Pierre Gasly, and Stroll, Verstappen, Albon, Kevin Magnussen, and Nicholas Latifi, Perez, and Mick Schumacher. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box, and it's fantastic to have you here with us today. But I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, I imagine they'll be starting to feel the adrenaline as they anticipate the rundown into Turn 1, a bit like preparing to go into battle. The unknown situation will bring nerves, but that's a good thing. It will keep them focused on the moment and on their surroundings as we build towards the start of the Grand Prix. So I don't really know what happened with the with the grid sequence and um, our name getting called very a lot quicker than it needed to and it was still saying that we were P12 even though we were last so God knows what's happening there but we're going to do medium to hard like seems to be the straightforward strategy at the minute but here we go into the 5 red lights we need a good start here in monaco i'd like to go out and we're underway and it's ferrari v mercedes science v hamilton down to the first corner we need to find some time and nearly hit the back of Mick schumacher but we've gained several places there now as we head up towards the casino and now around the casino we're on the back of sir lancelot gained quite a few positions now we're going to send it down the inside into Mirabeau I made that three positions and I'll send it on Joe Guan Yu nearly getting past Vettel and we started last and at the end of the half lap we find ourselves in the points in P10 and that was just a really good start sets us up for the race probably a bit unrealistic but who cares, it's a game as we've just been following Vettel now pretty much pushing him round the track trying to find a way past and then finally on lap 5 we're going to send him round the outside we get the job done on Vettel maybe track limits were a little bit dodgy there but we don't care as we go round the rest of the lap and now we have a big Big moment there on the exit, the final corner. Made a drop in it, and now this is allowing Vettel to come back at us, but we we force him a long way around and he backs out of it. But this is the replay of the overtake on Vettel, and you can see that we clipped his rear right tyre, and you can see it has given us some slight damage to the front wing. 
which was very costly in the end because the car did not feel the same after we gave it to Vettel. Here he comes again into turn one. We defend him to the outside of contact. And now headed up towards the casino. There's more contact. And now going through, there's even more contact. And it's third time unlucky for Sebastian Vettel. Whose front wing has gone flying up and out and off his car. Sebastian Vettel comes into the pits now, onto the hards, has a new front wing. 50 50, that is Paris's, Paris's engine. His engine's gone bang. Paris, who was already down at the back after a poor quality, has an early bath in Monaco. But I can't tell with Vettel. To be fair, they the not really got there and he was trying to go for it, he should have backed out. But Ryan could make it, I'm really know to stop onto the hard tyres. And I'm really struggling to time the pit stops. But as we come out of the pits, Sebastian Vettel, on fresh tyres and a lot of clear air, has done a very good job of catching us back up. And now this is Joe Kuan Yu, and you can see his go, go through there, and also Sebastian Vettel. So Joe Kuan Yu, after being behind us, it's kind of Vettel's got some great pace, and Mick Schumacher, Mick Schumacher's engine is gone. And now we skip on to the final lap, we were just, just keeping Vettel and Joe just at jabbing distance. They can get past, but it's a win for Sainz. How would it be to Leclerc P3? Again, on the podium, it's home Grand Prix. Not bad. And we are going to come home for our second point score of the season. Nearly drop it at the fucking corner. But we are going to finish another P9. Alright, race over. Take care of the car on the way in. They've done it then. They've won here in Monaco with an emphatic performance and a victory they can be proud of for years to come. Anthony Davidson, what helped them deliver this result, do you think? Well, they certainly stood out as a driver with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool, even during some of the more hectic parts of the race, meant they were able to capitalise on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease. Ferrari are at it again, an excellent performance at today's Grand Prix, and they're certainly a team that know what they're doing out there. So that's been your Monaco Grand Prix, very short but it's Monaco, not really much to show otherwise than me just being just ahead of Vettel and Joe, so two retirements. So this is the standings then, we've obviously gained some more points but we've gone down in the standings. That win for Sainz has really pulled him back into this title fight after his DNF in Spain last time out but that's been your Monaco Grand Prix I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope I see you in the next one in Baku that hopefully may be a much more dramatic than this has been but until that video goodbye